About 150 million years ago, there lived a genus of little dinosaurs called Archaeopteryx. It was about a half a meter long, weighed less than a kilogram, and might not have been very remarkable at the time. But its fossils are some of the most important we've ever found. Because this little dinosaur had both wings and incredibly well-developed feathers, which made it crucial to our understanding of how birds, which are technically dinosaurs, evolved. And new research published this week in the journal Nature Communications provides some of the first solid evidence that it used those wings and feathers for actual powered flight, as opposed to just gliding. Archaeopteryx wasn't a direct ancestor of today's birds. As far as we can tell, it was more like a close cousin of that lineage. But even though all of its descendants eventually died out, it's so closely related to the lineage that led to modern birds that it can tell us a lot about how they evolved. Archaeopteryx basically had a mix of both bird and non-avian dinosaur traits. It had a long, bony tail and jaws with sharp teeth like a dinosaur, along with contour feathers the kind that help birds fly on its forelimbs and tail. But we don't know exactly how it used those feathers, and there's a lot of debate about whether Archaeopteryx could only glide, or if it was capable of active flight. Researchers knew that to figure out the answer, they'd have to look at the internal structure of the dinosaur's bones. But we've only got 11 fossils of these guys, so they weren't going to just start chopping. To get around that problem, this new study involved a special non-invasive scanning technique called synchrotron microtomography, which uses X-rays to construct a detailed picture, in this case, of the architecture of a fossilized bone. In addition to Archaeopteryx, they also looked at the internal bone structure of a range of other species, including other dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and modern birds. The results confirmed something other researchers had found, that in general, bone architecture predicts an animal's flight ability. Across the species the researchers looked at, all the ones that could fly shared the same thin, lightweight bones. And if the species actively flew, as opposed to just gliding, its bones were structured in a way that would make them more resistant to the twisting forces that come with flapping wings. Which is what they saw in Archaeopteryx, too. Its bones were light, and their architecture looked a lot like what you would find in birds that mostly fly in short bursts, like pheasants. That said, Archaeopteryx's skeleton was still very different from that of a lot of today's birds, and there are lots of reasons to think it couldn't fly. For one thing, its shoulder joints had a simpler structure that would make it tough to flap the way modern birds do. It also didn't have the big keel on its breastbone that birds' flight muscles anchor to. The authors of this new study suggested that Archaeopteryx wing beats were just very different from what we're used to, moving in a more front-to-back grabbing type motion than the birds around today. So Archaeopteryx clearly wasn't a great flyer, but it may have been the earliest flying dinosaur we know of, foreshadowing all the flying dinosaurs living in your backyard today. Speaking of firsts, our ability to make graphene, the first two-dimensional material ever discovered, just leveled up. Graphene is made up of a single layer of carbon atoms arranged into a type of lattice. That's what makes it 2D. Which would be cool enough on its own, but the material's physical properties sound like something out of sci-fi. It can carry a thousand times as much current as copper, and it's 150 times stronger than steel, but still, like, pliable and stretchy. Its potential applications include new types of computer chips, solar cells, and super long-lasting batteries, among lots of other things. That is, if we could figure out how to mass-produce it. And in a paper published this week in the journal Nature Materials, researchers brought that goal a little closer to reality with a way to manufacture large sheets of graphene as single crystals. There are two traditional ways of making graphene. You can separate graphite, the form of carbon in pencils, into thinner and thinner flakes. Or you can grow it from scratch by pumping a carbon-containing gas over a layer of something else that acts as a catalyst to help get the carbon out of the gas and arranged into a sheet one atom thick. This is a new twist on that second method that allows for much tighter control of the process. The technique involves using a hydrocarbon gas, a gas with molecules made up of hydrogen and carbon, combined with a nickel-copper foil. When the gas hits that foil, it reacts in a way that results in a layer of carbon atoms being deposited. The researcher's new innovation was to carefully control where the carbon atoms went, growing the graph sheet along a specific leading edge, rather than letting carbon clusters form all over. Doing it this way required extremely hot temperatures over a thousand degrees Celsius, and blowing a stream of hydrogen-argon gas ahead of the growth front to keep the clusters of carbon atoms from forming where they weren't wanted. But by carefully controlling the conditions this way, the researchers could make sure that the fastest growing orientation of graphene crystals beat out the others. You end up with a sheet that's essentially one big 
single crystal instead of a mishmash of different ones. That makes it stronger and more conductive than graphene produced the old, less precise way. This concept is known as evolutionary selection growth, and it's been previously used for making 3D materials, but not a 2D material like graphene. And the researchers could grow these graphene crystal films at a rate of about 2.5 centimeters an hour. That may not sound like much, but considering that some of the more traditional methods would only get you about 0.3 centimeters an hour, it's pretty fast. Could graphene produce this way becoming to a computer chip or battery near you? Well, we're not quite at that point yet, but this new method of making it could help us get to it. In the meantime, though, there's still some pretty amazing stuff out there in the world right now. In November, we launched SciShow Finds, a corner of the internet where we have curated artifacts that remind us how the universe fills us with wonder. We're thrilled that you all cared about these special things as much as we did, so we're doing it again. We have a couple repeats that were requested, like the Mars socks, and more trilobite fossils, though slightly different trilobite fossils, because look at them. They're cool and old. They used to be everywhere, and now they're nowhere. And we have some new items that you can use to experience experiment in the world and share your science enthusiasm, including mystical fire, which turns any wood-burning fire into a weird rainbow. Be careful with this one, obviously, but also just throw it in there and don't tell your friends and they'll be like, what am I on? We've scoured the universe for the best refrigerator magnet in existence, and we think that we found that. They look like push pins, but they're so powerful. They're actually pull pins. They need that so that you can get them off. And you know, I can't not include a favorite book. The Story of Earth by Robert M. Hazen is the origin story that precludes all origin stories, and it's amazing. When he found out that we wanted to feature his book on SciShow Finds, Dr. Hazen even decided to write a letter to all the readers with updates on what he's learned since the book was published. Just like last time, we have a limited number of these special finds. Last time, a lot of them sold out pretty immediately. We're gonna keep them up until we run out, and then we will find new special things that show off and foster our love of the world. So head over to SciShowFinds.com to see what we got for you, uh, and if you buy something from SciShow Finds, know that you're supporting the people who make and find these cool things, and also supporting SciShow. <laughs> <laughs>